Hello and welcome to Cuesta Sports Monthly, an in-depth look at Cuesta Athletics. I'm Peter Schuler. On this month's show, it is Basketball Day on Cuesta Sports Monthly. Joining us from the men's basketball team are Noah Saunders and Josh Wilson-Murray. We'll also welcome two members of the women's basketball team's back, backcourt, Courtney Barba and Maya Armenta. A little later on we will get in the show, we will get some guidance from Cuesta's newest athletic counselor, Kelly Lyons. Right now, we are joined by men's basketball players Noah Saunders and Josh Wilson-Murray. Noah, Josh, welcome to Cuesta Sports Monthly. Uh, season's kind of coming towards the end right now. We have four games left in the season. Um, Noah, this is your second year. How, how do you feel the team has been going this year? I feel that we've been progressing like each game slowly and slowly, but um, you know, the last couple of games, you know, we've kind of slid down a little bit, but I believe these last three games, you know, we can definitely make a difference. We can make an impact on the conference, but you know, you have to win out. Yeah, to do right that. now, last year we, you had the in, instance where you were a second place team, yeah, but you had yeah. slid below, below 500 just last week. So yeah. you're kind of the focus with the team is now to get Oh yeah, back absolutely. Above yeah, we need we absolutely need to get these last three games just to have a contention, you know, within the conference. But you know, I believe, I believe our team can do that. Like, you know what I mean? I I have confidence. I have full confidence that our team can do that. Now you you're you're one of the one of the few sophomores on the team here. Yeah. What do you think about this group as compared to last year? Um, I think this year, um, we're a lot. The team's a lot more unselfish. You know, we move the ball a lot more. You know, everybody's more team oriented you know it's not like not more individual you know like I'm, I can go take the shot myself it's more you know I want to get I want to get my other guy the ball you know I want to move the ball I want to get everybody involved you know yeah we see that see that with your play you're, you're actually even dis, despite as much as you're passing the ball you're actually scoring numbers have gone up as well this year so oh, yes. it's kind of a nice, nice yeah. as you move the ball it gets back to you it seems oh yeah, oh, now, yeah. now Josh you've taken a couple years off and now you're back in there you're kind of the Cougar sharpshooter here uh, how's the season been running for you after a couple years since high school? It's been a it's been a good learning experience for uh, how things are going to be if I want to take my uh, my my skills to the next level, and it's uh, it's a good opportunity that the coaches are giving me. I, I I'm I'm really blessed to be able to put on the jersey and play for them. They're giving me good minutes. Uh, I that's pretty much all I can. Now both you guys are American, <laughs> uh, which is kind of kind of something. One of the, the the trademarks of Cuesta basketball is having a coach who's, who's who coached so many years in Belgium and played in Belgium. Um, there's so many European type, type players. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it different for you uh, playing playing with players from outside the country? Yeah, it's it's very different, uh, oh, yeah. especially since you know we both American. Obviously, we've grown up with people we can communicate with very easily. Now we're now we're playing with five Spanish guys who have English <laughs> as a second language, yeah. so it's 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 a little more difficult than you'd think. Basketball can translate in its own words in some some aspects, but but it's definitely uh, it has its challenges for sure. Oh yeah. Now you you've kind of you were you grew up in Pittsburgh, mm. uh, but you went to high school, finished high school in in Colorado. Yes. yes. And then you made it out here to, to uh, San Luis Obispo yeah. for basketball. So kind of talk, talk a little bit about your journey right there from uh, as you made your way west. As my all right, all right. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, as I was finishing out high school, you know, Rusty he reached out to me. And, you know, I thought it was a good opportunity just because from the get-go, I wanted to go JUCO just so I could get more experience, you know, get bigger and stronger. So I looked up the school and, you know, I saw that, I saw the, the environment and, you know, I saw San Luis Obispo and I saw, like, how beautiful it was. And not only that, but I've seen how many championships Rusty has brought the team to. So, you know, I thought it would be a good opportunity to come out here. So, yeah. so you made your way out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, w what's been the biggest transition for you? I mean, uh, San Luis Obispo and Pittsburgh's a, a small but big town. Oh yeah. And then yeah. you know, then you have you know, Colorado mm -hmm. Springs has got its own kind of vibe. And then, what's um, the biggest challenge for you coming out here to San Luis Obispo? Um, honestly, there's not, there hasn't been any real challenges. I mean, it's beautiful out here. You know, like <laughs> I, I'm basically living the dream out here. You know, I wake up, it's like 85 degrees out. You know, the beach is right there. I'm playing basketball. You know, I met some great people out here. I mean, honestly, I'm just living the dream, just focusing on class and basketball, enjoying life. Well, you're doing well on both both accounts uh, all the way through. Thank uh, you. Basketball team again is going to be nominated for the State Scholar Award, so that's that's great. The old oh, yeah. overall team has an overall 3.0. So, Josh, how about how about you? How about your tran your you you're only from Paso Robles, but your transition coming down here. Is a, so. Yeah, that's actually uh, some 
uh, it's actually one mistake that a lot of people do make. I'm not I'm not from Paso Robles. I grew up here in San Luis Obispo. I uh, my family moved to Paso Robles when I was about 15 years old, so that's why. Uh, you're Lots of people make that okay. mistake that I'm from Paso, but I did go to high school there. I, I played for uh, Coach Drake there. He uh, he taught me a lot of good things, and like you said, I've been out of high school for, for about three years before I came back. I graduated in 2014. I went through some personal troubles. Not going to go too deep into it. You know, point is, is I, uh, I broke, broke free my addiction, and I'm living a healthy life now, staying busy, yeah. and I'm doing what I love, and I'm doing it with some good people, and I'm, and I'm meeting people from lots of different places, too, at the same time. Now, now what, I mean... With that layoff and the struggles, but but your game, you, you don't feel your game is, is, seems to be at a high level the whole time. Is that just something that you've kind of been working on the whole time, or is it just, it's, you just know, it's just you? So I like to say it's kind of like riding a bike, but, but I have to admit that I, on my comeback, my, my ball handling skills were put to a test because there's lots of athletic guards out there in California, and, and uh, I'm definitely going to have to put some, put some work in on that in the off season to get my, my ball handling skills up. Now let's explore that a little bit. Uh, I mean, Noah, you're probably a three, yeah. but for us, we end up playing a lot of the four or five type things because oh, yeah. of the way community college is. I and know. then the guard play is so strong. I mean, you don't see mm-hmm. the, te- the best teams aren't they don't have a seven footer or a six ten guy. It's 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 the the two three fours basically. What, what's so well? It's like talk about the challenge of playing those guys. There's so many so much talent at that level in the, in those positions where everybody's. Well, coach says says to us all the time like when he played there wasn't the three-point line and once that line got painted on the court it changed the game and and now you got players out there like Steph Curry and oh yeah and people all, all the kids look up to him you know so it's yeah. just it's just making the standards a lot higher for for guard play oh, if you yeah. want to keep going up and playing on the playing on the next level especially especially playing big you know you have to guard usually guard bigger people you know you have to bang with some big guys down there but I mean overall I mean, you just have to, you just have to go down there and do your thing. Like at the end of the day, you can't, you can't be scared. You just gotta go out there and play ball. Like Rusty says, you gotta go out there and bang. Yeah, and Rusty, Rusty's a shooter, shooter. Uh, we all know that. <laughs> you don't want to get in a shooting contest with Rusty. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. But uh, you know, uh, has he worked with you in the in the paint? Have you is oh, you yeah. moved down there in the block? Oh yeah, and, every and day. You feel comfortable about that? Yeah, Did every he show day. you the Jack Sigma move with the big elbow. Oh no no! Okay, he is don't, don't ask about that. <laughs> oh. no, you don't want him to, to, to describe that one. No, we might need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, you guys are coming down to the end here, and uh, just kind of looking at you coming here to your second year. What what's kind of? I know you're, you've got a lot of looks. What, what are you looking for for next year? Um, you know, my not to go beyond the last three weeks, but you know. oh, gotta yeah, get yeah. the hats up on the table <laughs> so you can pick for that. No, you know, the ultimate goal for me from the get go has been to go D one. And, you know, I've, I have no clue where I'm going to end up next year yet. I'm still trying to make that decision. But, um, you know, the ultimate goal will always be to go Division One. and, you know. But I want to I wanna go to a place wherever I fit in, you know, wherever um, it's team-oriented and, you know, I can get in the gym every day, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I still, haven't, I still haven't come down to a decision well, yet. Well, we look forward to seeing that decision. We look forward to seeing you guys wrap up the, the, the season and hopefully extend it into the postseason. So that does it for men's basketball here on Quest of Sports Monthly. I'd like to thank Noah Saunders and Josh Wilson-Murray for joining us. Coming up next, women's basketball. And we stay in the hard court coming up next. Cuesta.edu. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. Explore the world of digital communication and tap into your creative genius. Television, radio, broadcast, communication. This is your boy, the DUI, and you're listening to KGUR.org. Your digital future is at Cuesta College right now. Log on to Cuesta.edu now for enrollment dates and class information. Hey, don't get the boom in this stuff. Blow it, bro. Cuesta.edu. We're back on campus and back on the hardwood with Cuesta Sports Monthly. I'm Peter Schuler, and we are joined by Cuesta's starting backcourt, Courtney Barba and Myra Menta from Cuesta Women's Basketball. 
So welcome, Courtney. Welcome, Maya, to Cluster Sports Monthly. Uh, you guys are kind of wrapping up the season here. Um, how are you feeling about your freshman season of basketball so far? Um, I think my freshman season is going pretty well. The record kind of doesn't show it, but like it's a learning experience, so I think we're doing pretty good. Now, how, how do you feel you, you developed? I mean, you've, you've, your numbers have steadily increased all season long. Have you felt that, or is that just that you've had a particular role? No, I've role? definitely felt that, because in high school, my role wasn't really scoring as much. I was more of getting a lot of assists and looking for the open player, but college, I've developed scoring and shooting more, looking for my shot, so I've grown a lot through college. Now, Courtney, this is your second year. What, what have got, kind of do you feel you've developed over the last two years? Um, I would say my aggression on offense. I used to be more of just a defensive player. That was my role. But my averages for offense and scoring have gone up. So Now, you are, you are averaging close to 17, 18 points a game. Uh, was that something you'd expected <laughs> coming into the year? No, I never <laughs> thought I would average that, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Now, and, and you also had one big game against a, a ranked team, the College of the Syracuse, a 37-point game. Yeah. Uh, one of the, I think it's right now we have the second or third highest score. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to have that night uh, against a ranked team where you just... I wasn't thinking about it when it was happening. <laughs> I was just kind of playing, and after when they said how many points I had, I was like, wow, really me? <laughs> so it was, it was really good. It was a confidence booster for sure. Now, last year we, we talked about, as your freshman year, you, you were kind of, you, you were and to expected to be the big scorer. Yeah. You could score, but you were more defensive and you did a nice job uh, with the group. So coming into this year and the amount of injuries we've had this year, last year's big injury we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. But what, what, what's kind of changed in your role this year? Um, I think just because we are a really young team, we didn't have anyone that was like stepping up to score, I guess you could say. I mean, everyone's super capable, but I think because I'm the oldest sophomore, it just kind of came naturally, I guess you could say. Now, did you feel a need to kind of lead with this group? Yeah, or? I felt like I needed to step up personally to help the team and show them that they can do it too. Yeah, now, now, early season injuries and some of the injuries, I mean, you, you missed one game with sickness, you missed one game with a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, what are, some, what are some, of the, some of the things that you, as, how do you keep this group together? I mean, as a sophomore leader, as a point guard, what do you guys have as a strategies when you guys do have a tough game or a tough thing to keep this team as motivated as they are? Well, we try and stay positive because we've hit a lot of adversity this season, probably more than I've ever <laughs> hit. <laughs> it has been, but, <laughs> it's yeah. been a lot of injuries and a lot of things but, happen. But um, we just keep staying positive and looking, moving forward to the next game and just trying to get better throughout the season. That's kind of a conscious thing. You just like, hey guys, we're going to get better. We're going to keep yeah. going yeah, all the way through there. Yeah. Nice. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about you first, but, but you, you come from an athletic family. Your dad's a coach. Has that something been created some sort of drive for you as a player? How, how does that inform, inform you as a basketball player and as a leader on the Yeah, on he's the definitely court? influenced me a lot in my basketball career. It's like since I was little, he used to coach me like rec league and stuff and he's really into sports so I felt like that was my way of like getting close to him and building our relationship so yeah well, he should be very proud <laughs> <laughs> now your dad is, <laughs> is Maya's coach this year and your coach this year uh, it, one of the things that your dad talked about was that you are a coach on the, he's a coach on the floor and a bat he can be a dad off the floor mm -hmm. that was something that you guys had discussed prior to you guys, prior to you joining the team yeah I actually made a contract <laughs> when I first came here <laughs> with him <laughs> so tell us a little bit how that contract worked <laughs> <laughs> so basically when we're on the floor he's my coach I'm his player and then off the floor I'm his daughter and we don't bring basketball stuff or the game into that part of our life. Does that ever, ever get difficult or is that? Or it do does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. But, I mean, it's worked out so far. Now, you've been looking, you know, the, have, having this big sophomore season, uh, looking up to other places and where you might go beyond Cuesta. Um, now, is that factor in there too? Because he may be having to pay for some of this season. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> What are some of the schools, of, what are your, kind of your plans for next year? Um, the jump ahead of three games. So. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly where I'll be. Hopefully within this next month I can start deciding if, like, where 
if I'll be playing basketball, will I just be getting my degree? Um, just kind of depends again on money because the schools I'm looking at are private, so it's a little more expensive for tuition. Come on, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, well, uh, and another thing was, was different for you, just talked about co having a coach as a dad, but also last year when your dad sat out last season with, with an illness, mm -hmm. uh, how hard was it to, for you as, as a daughter to, to not let that affect not having him treating you yeah. like a player <laughs> um, from the bench? Yeah. But how, how, how did that, I mean, did that, that weigh on you at all during the season last year? Or is that, um, it or is this on the hardwood? I think when it first, because we had a tournament when I, f I think the hardest part was that I found out when the rest of the team found out. So I was kind of a little shocked, I guess you could say. But, I mean, we had a tournament that weekend, and I knew I needed to play and do what I had to do. So it wasn't really an option to be so concerned about it. So once the whistle blew. It was, yeah. I'm a player. I'm not going to worry about. Exactly. So so that was last year's big injury. Yeah. So, so, so now, having him this whole year, how has that change made been for you? So he's instead of having for half a season. Yeah. But this... It's uh, been a learning experience okay. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Testing our relationship as player, coach, father, daughter, <laughs> definitely. Now you two played played in high school together. Yes. And now you have another player on the team, uh, Mariah. Mar Mariah joining you. So what's it like? Do you can you feel? I mean, that, that's your job is <laughs> to distribute a little bit. But do you can you, you kind of know where Courtney's going to be or, or yeah. Mariah's going to be? Can you feel that? When, yeah, on the court? we definitely had like really good chemistry in high school when we played at Rigetti. So. It was like kind of exciting knowing that three of us played together and we're going to play right now or this season. And definitely on the court, you could tell that our chemistry is a little bit better compared to like other girls that we just met this season. But it was exciting. Now, um, I, I <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I know how, how you feel about having your, your dad's coach, but uh, but. With you as as a coach coming in here with Coach Barba, and one of the, one of the things I know you had if you went to Hancock, you would have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but you also had the option to go there play for Hancock. Uh, but what what was the thing that brought you to Quest College, and what was the things? What are the things that you've enjoyed about Quest College? Well, um, I've known Ron or Barba, Coach Barba. Coach Barba. <laughs> <laughs> I've known him since I was little. I used to like play with him on like traveling teams, or just we would. He would get a team together and ask if I could come play at Cuesta. And so I would play for him. So I knew his style and I liked his style. It was more up tempo running. And um, Hancock, I noticed, was a little more slower, like setting, setting up offense, not that much pressure. Um, so I really, that was like my deal breaker. I really wanted to come here. And Ron seemed like he had more interest in me coming here. So. Well. Both of you guys have thrived, thrived mm -hmm. playing for Ron, Ron Coach Barba, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we wish you the, the best of success the rest of the season and into next year, wherever we may be. Thank so, you. So thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you. That's Maya Armenta and Courtney Barba from Cuesta Women's Basketball. When we come back, we'll be joined by Cuesta Athletic Counselor Kelly Lyons. Produced by Cuesta Broadcasting. Start your radio, TV, and film career at Cuesta College. We're back to talk about the success of Cuesta student athletes and how to keep them on track. For, for our, our athletic counselor Kelly Lyons. Kelly, welcome to Cuesta Sports Monthly, and uh, welcome to Cuesta College. Welcome back to Cuesta College, I should say. Um, <laughs> you've been back now as a Cuesta athletic counselor for. Since uh, this past August. So this is my second semester as an academic counselor here at Cuesta. Um, I first started with the Zoom program and was welcomed on board um, in the athletic department as our new athletics counselor, which is a super exciting role for me. Now, how did you get, get into counseling? I know that you've, you've, <laughs> you've kind of had a long track into that, but now you've completed your degree at Cal Poly. And 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I love it when people ask me that question because I feel like it kind of comes full circle here to my my days here as an, a student athlete myself. Um, I was actually Pete's water polo athlete um, back in the early 2000s, and I also swam here on the swim team and um, really was majoring in water polo and swimming, and I loved it, and I, I did an okay job of it, um, but at the end of finishing my bachelor's degree, realized that I had no idea what I wanted to major, what I wanted to do with my life, and um, that was kind of a difficult time, and you know, through that transition and discovering myself and what I valued and what I was good at, um, realized that I really wanted to help student athletes make those decisions earlier in life and while they were a current student athlete. So um, helping student athletes discover what they're good at, um, what they're capable of, what they value, what they're interested in is definitely um, not only a professional passion, but um, a personal passion as well. Now you're talking about your, your success here at Quest College, and you were all state, both water polo and swimming. It was wonderful, <laughs> but uh, you also you, st you came here after a year at your University of mm -hmm. Pacific, then you came to Quest College, uh, and then up to a, a new school, a new program up at, up at uh, Cal State Monterey Bay. Mm -hmm. So you've had experience as an athlete at both the D1 Community College and then at the D2 level. So how was right. that, you know, kind of that breadth of experience as an athlete? informed you as a counselor? Translate over to being a counselor, that's a really good question too. I mean, yeah, like Pete said, I have experience as an, a student athlete at a private school, at a community college, at a UC and at a CSU. Um, so transfer requirements have changed quite a bit since the early 2000s. Um, as to be expected, but um, just having the general personal experiences in those different um, transitions and different, you know, GPA requirements and transfer requirements um, has really helped me as an academic athletics counselor just know what student athletes are up against as far as their own transfer requirements and what we require of them in order to transfer out. Um, so I would say those personal experiences have definitely helped me in my new role. Um, but like I said, a lot of things have changed. So there's definitely a lot of learning. <laughs> well, I mean, Quest College, uh, we have had great success over our average student athlete is over 3.0. But there, are, but it's not an easy transition all the time. I mean, with the amount of travel we have to do with the area we're in, mm -hmm. but also because of the demographic where we have so many students, like we had uh, Noah here earlier, and. Uh, and Josh, Josh is a local kid, but Noah's from, from out of state. Right. So the transitions for some of those kids uh, can be difficult, both academically and athletically. As a counselor, how do you help them, uh, just not, not just to go on, but mm -hmm. to succeed here at Cuesta College? Definitely. Um, you know, I can, you know, relate that to my own personal experiences as well as, you know, I went away to UOP and while Stockton isn't that far from San Luis Obispo, that was my version of going away. And we certainly have students coming in from other countries, which is a huge challenge and a huge transition. So um, just getting connected to support services across campus right away is super important. Um, it's really important that the coach recognize, you know, student challenges and rec recognize those and um, relay those to, to counseling staff or um, you know talk to, talk it out with the student athlete himself or herself um, so that we can best serve him so whether that might be you know getting him or her involved in campus clubs so that they feel like they belong here at Cuesta or um, it may be in different um, activities in our community in our local community um, or maybe they're having a challenging time with um, their academics and they need uh, you know tutoring services which we offer here for free um, so there's an array of different things that might come up and so it's really up to you know coaching staff to um, you know student athletes peers their teammates um, to the counselors to our faculty to our instructors to kind of recognize some of those things that our students might be having a challenging time with so that we can best help them Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I see that. Um, but um, just just uh, one of the, one of the things is, is because we have that that group of students from outside of the area mm -hmm. so much. How does that impact you? Just just as a counselor. Right. Um, not, I mean, as the coaches, we always talk about yeah. how athletics is, is in a lot of schools is the kind of the uh, thing that connects students right away. For sure. Uh, it gives them a sense of of uh, connection with, mm -hmm. with the school, not only uh, non athletes but also athletes. But mm -hmm. how does uh, as an athlete, when you have some of these some of these students coming in from outside the area, especially the foreign students, for sure. Um, how how do you I mean, with the translation from schools from Noah's from out of state or some of the mm -hmm. other to get them in the right classes? One of the kind of things that 
Does that take a lot of work to try to right. compare everything? Well, I mean, it depends on if they're coming in from a high school or if they're coming in from, like, you know, in my case, um, another four-year college, or maybe they came in from another community college and they have external transcripts. So there's definitely a process of the counselors evaluating those transcripts to see, okay, what coursework have you already taken, or have you taken AP coursework, and how does that translate to um, your goals here at Cuesta? What are you hoping to achieve? Is it your goal just to achieve an associate's degree? And I don't mean just because that's an amazing goal to have but um, are you hoping to go on to the four-year um, you know what are your what are your thoughts um, what are your goals what are your personal goals and what have you done already that applies to you know how we can get you to where you are now to where you want to be so definitely evaluating those transcripts um, sitting down with them having discussions about their major and their their career goals and um, how those relate to a student education plan um, so then we help them map out that plan so that they have kind of a plan for success. So yeah, when we have a lot of we have 15 sports, uh, mm -hmm. about 200 student athletes, mm -hmm. and and as, as that seems to be, uh, it's all kind of kind of falling on you, and you feel you seem to be ready for the task. <laughs> up, up for it. Uh, is there anything kind of like your your plan when you when you got into this position? You realize you had that responsibility now. Yeah. Not only dealing with 200 students, but 15 very ornery and competitive, and you know control uh, happy <laughs> coaches. What was the thing that you kind of made, made your mind? It's like, this is how I should, should game plan that group. Um, you know, first and foremost, my priority is to serve the student athletes here at Cuesta. So um, their, their goals, their needs come before anyone else's. Um, and then of course, balancing the needs of the, our counseling department and the athletics department is super important as well. So um, keeping everyone happy can be a very easy feat and sometimes a little bit challenging. Um, but it's just important to always, you know, stay centered on the student and make sure that their needs are met first. Um, as far as um, you know, helping student, helping the coaching staff out with like recruiting efforts and that sort of thing. Um, I absolutely love doing that. Um, sometimes it's difficult to find time to do that um, during my schedule, but I love opening up myself, you know, as much as possible. And it's just, it's been a fun journey so far. Now you did, you started at Hancock mm -hmm. at, at this position, then you went down to Mr. Viejo to Saddleback. Mm -hmm. What were the things that you brought from those schools on your way there? Um, yeah, so I started out at Allen Hancock College um, in the athletics department as a student success instructor and mostly worked with student athletes who were academically at risk. A lot of what you were just talking about as far as having these, um, you know, maybe they have academic challenges or they're from, you know, different countries or they're, you know, have financial challenges. Um, so just having the experience in helping these students out and helping them gain necessary resources. Okay. Well, thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have you back on the show if we can. Uh, <laughs> that does it for Quest of Sports Monthly. I'd like to thank Kelly Lyons for joining us, as well as Courtney Barba and Maya Armenta, and from the basketball team, Noah Saunders and uh, Josh Wilson-Murray. Uh, again, I'd like to th th hope you can join us next, next week when we are visiting with baseball and swimming and diving. Uh, remember, to keep up with Cuesta Sports, check the Cuesta Athletic website and be sure to join us on uh, local cable channel two all year long. And this show is produced at Cuesta College by Cuesta uh, Film, Television, and Electronic Media Department as part of the Cuesta TV project. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Cuesta Sports Monthly.